So if you're new, welcome. I'm Suzanne Clegg, and this is the group Distance Healing. And um, I talk for a few minutes, and then we go into the actual deed of the, um, the guided meditation and all that. If you know how to do image cycling, just start your spinner now. And if you don't, just listen for a while, and I'll guide you how to do that later. Um, but um, as many of you know, I... I been doing the Bankston method for about 15 years and holistic health for about 40 years um, and one of the things I am is a one of the many things I am is a sound healer I used to be senior faculty at the Acutonics Institute of Integrative Medicine so I know how to heal people with these th these guys right I know how to like stimulate the act the uh, the um, healing forces in people Use different notes, different combinations of notes, different, not always tuning forks, other sounds, voice. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so part of what we do with the Bankston method is this image cycling exercise, which involves rotating a bunch of images around in your head. And rotation implies frequency. And when you're working with frequency, you're working with big overlap with sound because most the anyway the wavelengths of frequency that you can hear are pretty big and you can you can I feel like what sound healing does is it really brings heaven to earth it just goes through all the levels whether it's the physical whether it's the life force whether it's the astral the emotions the images the spiritual sound seems to penetrate through all of them and there's research with this and all this good stuff, but um, uh, the the spinning that we do, that I'm doing right now in the back of my head, has a certain frequency. And it's not that there's a certain frequency that cures cancer. It's not like that at all. It's that frequency helps us connect. Or frequency is a reflection of the connection that we have. Um, I think it's David Hawkins. I think that's the name of the guy, the psycho, psych, psychiatrist that wrote a lot of stuff about a decade ago. He had this idea that um, emotions, you know, he's a psychiatrist, so he works with emotions a lot. He said that um, emotions have different frequencies, so different cycles per second, different hertz, different wavelengths, different Wavelength isn't the same as frequency, but, you know, we have all these things going on. Um, he would say that things like hate and jealousy are lower frequencies than feelings like courage and joy and happiness. And I thought, oh, okay, that, that fits with what I know. That's an interesting point of view. I can get some traction doing that. And so, um, and then like Esther Hicks with her Law of Attraction, she said sometimes when you're, in the doldrums at, at these lower levels, you can't really reach the joy and the healing that, that you long for because you're hurting. And so what she suggests is you just take a baby step up and a baby step up and a baby step up until you do have access to these higher um, vibrations. And then um, when I was treating people in my Sticks and Bricks office a while ago, I would do sound healing on them and then I would do the Bankston method and they would say, well, your tuning forks are, what, 125 cycles a second in that range, 100 to 200, maybe 300 for the very high forks, maybe 400, A440, right? Um, but um, she says, when I, when I see you doing the Bankston method, it's as if an angel's in the room, and that angel's at a much higher frequency, and we use that word intentionally, frequency, as the, um, as the sound. So that got me thinking that we could um, use the law of the octave to reach into the frequencies that um, are loftier than what, what we might not have access to otherwise. Using the, the hermetic principle of as above, so below and the law of the octave, we don't have to be angels in order to tap into that frequency and as a energy therapist, 
I understand that sometimes the frequency that you give needs to be held in an emotionally neutral container. Let me say that again. The frequency that you hold needs to be held in an emotionally neutral container. And the emotionally neutral container, the way I label that is my witness or my inner witness. Okay. So my inner witness can watch me having an emotion. It can watch me spinning my spinner at different speeds. Um, and then I'm that, okay, so there's that piece. And then what I started realizing was more powerful with the Bankston method than with my tuning forks or just, it's all art, right? So it's just a different moment of it is that I could ask for a frequency and it would be given to me. I would, oh, it needs to be that fast. Oh, oh, there it is right there, right there, right there, right there. And that opened me up to the idea that I was playing with higher spiritual forces, not literally playing music with them as I was doing the healing. And that my job was to watch the show and to witness it and to try to attune to it with my spinner and other ways too. But that's just one very easy way for me to attune to something. I just let my spinner spin at the speed of it. Okay. And then with my private clients, I teach them what to do when the spinner slows down and what that means. And you know, there's just this whole living relationship I have with, with this spinning that, um, that I've developed over 15 years of, well, 15 years of using the Bankston method and then being a sound healer before that for about 10 years. So um, that's 25 years of, of just really getting to know this. So let's see. So with that, it's time to do the, the, the meditation. So how are we going to help? How is this going to help us? Um, what I've found is that if you receive a frequency of your spinner, it's tends to be better at some level than if you make it go a certain speed, but you can't really, and then, but beginners need to, you know, try to copy and do certain speeds, like spin as fast as a bicycle tire, spin as fast as a blender, spin as fast as a lawnmower blade, you know, anything that a car going 100 miles an hour, their tires, washing machines, there's lots of circular things. And then going faster and faster and faster until you're out of the mechanical universe and into the frequencies of sound and light and beyond. Beyond visible light and then beyond the speed of light. All the way up to where it's just infinite. And that feels like you're not even spinning up there. And yet you are. It goes past. It's like you... you pop into non-duality. You're here, but you're here in this dual world where there's up and down and light and dark and yin and yang, but you're also, a part of you is in that other place that all this duality emerges out of. And the metaphor that I have that helps me pay attention, I don't know that this is true, but it's a, when you're talking about spiritual things, they're not physical, so any almost any description you make of them is philosophic and is an approximation. So the approximation I have is that I'm uh, watching the grace of the divine, the information, pour in on all the vibratory frequencies that I can be aware of. And I'm cycling at a speed that resonates with my intention. So that might have just gone over the head of a beginner, like, okay, so I'm super so philosophic. That's just who I am. Hope you like it. Um, I feel like if you're not philosophic about this stuff, you it becomes rote. And then you aren't following the instruction manual of being playful and avoiding ritual if you're doing it right. If you're not thinking and molding and having a living relationship with it. Okay, good. So let's uh, begin. <laughs> 